Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we look at lithium ion phosphate batteries, van conversions and everything in between. Basically, we want to help you to be able to convert your van, fit out an epic electrical system and find that adventure and most importantly, enjoy that cup of tea or coffee, whatever your preference, while you're in the middle of nowhere with an awesome view. So if you've been following this series, uh, I've done a short series, just uh, three videos uh, or two videos so far. This is the third video of the series and probably where I'll wrap it up around these cells. So these are 200 amp hour liter color lithium ion phosphate cells. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I've had mixed reviews and opinions on the videos so far. Some people saying that some of the liter color stuff is good. Some people saying they got lucky. Others saying that it's horrendous or that the worst things that they've ever bought. Uh, looking at various things on Alibaba, it's a bit hidden. Some people kind of say they're all right. Uh, from what I can see on the whole though, the general consensus is that uh, liter color are not grade A, probably not even grade B, and more likely grade C cells that are like um, Eve or Ketel or, or one of those manu manufacturers or possibly even Lycian, um, and that they're just relabeling them, putting a bogus QR code on them and uh, selling them off as brand new. And I suspect that that is probably what I've got here. Uh, in the last video, I shared the results of the first capacity test that I did, where they got an average of 176 amp hours, uh, but they're rated at 200 amp hours. So quite significantly below the uh, manufacturer specified amount. Um, so quite disappointing, to be honest, uh, but kind of what you'd expect if they weren't grade A, if they were grade B recon cells or something like that. Um, so. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm still going to build it out with a BMS, make a battery out of it, and then I'm going to do a capacity test with the BMS on it and just see if with the BMS, if it's able to balance them a little bit and get a bit more capacity out of them, uh, maybe even uh, help a little bit with the um, voltage loss. Uh, so one of the things with uh, these capacity tests is that when you're drawing uh, a certain amount of amperage, you're losing some voltage on your wire and the way that you protect the cell is that when the capacity tester gets to a certain threshold that you set, it turns itself off. So in this case, I had set on there that when it reaches 2.3 volts, that it cuts itself off. And so obviously, once you take into account the voltage loss and the voltage loss because there's a current uh, being drawn, uh, that when the ba battery then actually balances out and settles down after the current has stopped being drawn from it, it'll settle down at like 2.6, 2.7 uh, volts, uh, which is above the sort of 10 volt uh, threshold that you don't want to take sort of the bank below. Um, and so that's what I did here and we still got 176 amp hours. So we'll see. I doubt I'll get much different results from putting a BMS on it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not sure what the results will be in terms of getting money back for these because it's clearly a long way off the mark, uh, but kind of this is all just uh, evidence as well in terms of that. And we're going to be doing videos in the future around Alibaba and AliExpress and our experience around that stuff that we wish that we'd known and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to take this all apart uh, while I'm setting up the BMS. I'm going to use a brand new uh, 150 amp DALI BMS, which we have in stock. So we stock them here and help people by uh, having quick delivery. So if you're looking for a BMS and you don't want to wait uh, for one to be delivered from China, then maybe we can help you out there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take this all apart and uh, get the BMS onto here.
Okay, they're all finger tight. So now I'm going to prep my torque wrench, which I'm getting to six Newton meters. And we'll go through and tighten all of these. Right. And then I'm going to put the Bluetooth module. So this is the Dali BMS that has the little node on it. So you'll see there's a little, hopefully you can see that showing up in the video there. It's a little on switch just my, by my finger there. So that actually turns the Dali BMS on. So this goes into the, uh, into the port that on this 150 amp BMS that says UART, which is that one there. And then I think we are just about there. So if I check this, right. So we will plug the balance leads in there. And then <clears throat> if we then push this button on the Bluetooth module, we then should have a 12 volt battery. There we go, 14.73 volts. And if we go to the DALI app, yep, so it's showing us 14.6 volts, but uh, zero current going in or out, which is good. The state of charge is zero. So sometimes that state of charge takes a little bit of, uh, a couple of cycles to um, get some sort of ac reasonable reading. They're not totally accurate because it's based on voltage. Um, so it's not actually counting amp hours. So I'm just going to go through the preferences here quickly. Cell high protect. Um, I would usually set this to 3.65. We're going to change the low voltage disconnect to 2.5 volts. Yeah. So some some voltage uh, high voltage protect is 14.6. Default protection uh, diff voltage protection is 2.25 uh, volts. Uh, charge over current protection is 225 amps. Um, yeah, that's fine. Never going to get to that level of uh, charge current. Uh, rated capacity, 200 amps. Cell reference volt, 3.2. So the nominal voltage is 3.2. Uh, state of charge set, balance. Uh, yeah, that's all fine. Um, cell boards, yeah, that's all fine. Charge, high temp, correct. Uh, protect 65, low temp is fine, discharge, high temp 70, low temp, discharge, I'm going to make that 4 degrees, just because I don't want to ever charge the cells below freezing, uh, diff, that's fine, system settings, okay, cool, all set there, so looking good, all right, so there we go, uh, got the BMS all connected there, uh, now we are just going to do a discharge test. So I'm going to connect up one of our testers here and uh, we will discharge it until it hits the low voltage disconnect. Uh, so let's get on with that. Okay. Um, okay, so that's all connected now. I'm going to connect this up here uh, and I've zeroed out the uh, amp hours here, which is tells us how much has been drawn from the battery. Uh, the battery is settled at 14 volts, so still a full state of charge. And when we dial up this, wind up this top dial there, we can see the amp starting to go up there. That's, oops, I've just gone over the threshold. <laughs> Wound that too far. Let's go. So if you draw too much, it, it has a limit basically to protect itself so it doesn't overheat. And so I get that to around 12 amps is about the limit that I can draw on this. There we go. You can see the numbers starting to climb there, the amp hours that we've drawn. The voltage has dropped a little bit, so obviously naturally that's going to drop a bit more because of voltage loss on the cables. Uh, but once the BMS hits the low voltage disconnect, uh, so once one of the cells hits the low voltage disconnect threshold that we've set, it'll then cut off all power being drawn from the battery and we'll be good to go. So I'm going to leave that running. It'll probably take the best part of a, a day or so, at least 200 amp hours 
a 12 amp, uh, yeah, 12 amps of draw um, is going to be roughly about probably 14 hours or thereabouts to deplete. So by tomorrow morning when I come and check on it, it should have cut itself off and the BMS will have shut down and protected the cell. So we'll leave that running and then I'll update you guys on how we got on and what the results are. Okay, so the test has run and uh, we've depleted the battery. Uh, so I'm just going to pick this up so that you guys can see it, see what's happening. So I've wound these dials down, which stops the draw. Push that button there, we can see uh, zero amps being drawn. And again, we've got 176 amp hours. <coughs> um, it's going to keep doing that because obviously the BMS has turned itself off to protect the battery cells. Uh, so yeah, there we have it. Completed uh, battery, uh, as in like built the battery out and got the very same results, 176 amp hours. So uh, yeah, that basically concludes our test and there's really not much more that we could do with this unless we really push the limits on uh, the voltage thresholds. But to be honest, when you look at the um, the uh, uh, charge and discharge curve of lithium ion phosphate, um, it's such a flat trajectory that we, by the time you get to the knees, you're getting very little capacity in those uh, drop offs. Um, so the drop off down to like 13.6 volts and then across um, when you really get to that, that fast drop off there. So um, at the end, so uh, yeah, suffice to say, Lita Kyla do not sell grade A cells. They're probably grade B or grade C, uh, probably reconditioned Ketel or Lysian cells or something like that. But yeah, these were advertised and sold as uh, 200 amp hour cells and they are not 200 amp hour cells. They are 175 amp hours now, uh, given that they are not grade A. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, our testing on these done. Would I recommend these? No. Uh, however, having said that, uh, it depends what you really want. Um, if you want cheap uh, watt hours per pound or per dollar, um, then these aren't a bad option. Um, I'd have to work out what they would give you, but uh, it would be a pretty cheap source of electricity or of stored electricity. Um, but if you want a really, good, if you are expecting a really good, reliable battery cell, um, then this is not your best option. You're better off getting something else. Um, but like I said, they were cheap. They were under $300 delivered to my door. So I wasn't expecting them to be awesome. I wasn't expecting them to be EVE cells, considering that if you wanted a, a, an equivalent set of EVE or um, Ketel or Lysian cells, you're talking probably double the price at least delivered, um, even from China. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm not that surprised. Uh, pretty much what I was expecting. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to try and get my money back and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll be doing a video on uh, Alibaba and sort of our experience around that stuff. We wish we'd known that sort of thing. Um, we've had a few disputes when we bought dud products and stuff and some lessons learned there that we want to share with you guys to hopefully help you with that. Um, and as always, we're going to be continuing uh, the Van Build series. Uh, currently our schedule looks like that. The Van Build series goes out on a Sunday and then we're doing battery and other related content uh, on a Wednesday. So we're trying to do two videos a week for you guys. Um, so hopefully enjoying that and enjoying the additional content. Uh, my dad just recently got some Lysian cells that we are sampling and testing to potentially start building out batteries as a different variation to what we're offering people in the UK and Europe. Um, so there's going to be a series around those, testing those and trying to uh, see what we think of those compared to the EVE cells. Um, so look out for that uh, and we also have some other cheap uh, options as well that we're going to be playing around with. So yeah, we're enjoying the series. Uh, there's lots more to come and I hope you are enjoying it as well. Thanks for your comments and feedback and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.